Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, okay. So, hope you can hear me. My, uh, my name is Franca, and I'm one of the Turgor facilitators based here in um, Vancouver, Canada. And I'm happy to be here again. So it's uh, oh, just seeing where everyone's from. That's great. Okay, Michigan, Brazil. Tawasan, Tawasan is near Vancouver, so that's in Canada. Argentina, Melbourne. Okay, great. Okay, well, really nice to see how we can come together from so many distant places and be part of this community. I hope uh, that you've been enjoying these different stay home and meditate practice sessions. And um, as many of you know that are tuning in, these sessions are based on the teachings of Mingyur Rinpoche. And, um, and they're part of the Trigger International offerings in response to COVID. So, um, okay, just having another peek here. Okay, Ho Hawaii, aloha, <laughs> South Korea. Okay, super. Okay. So, so yeah, so, so Minga Rinpoche was um, teaching on Sunday and he was speaking about destructive thoughts and how to transform them. It's, uh, it's such an important topic, isn't it? I mean, how we hurt each other when we act on our destructive thoughts or, or, or how we even hurt ourselves with our thoughts. Um, Rinpoche, you know, he's, he's made it so clear that thoughts aren't the enemy. You know, he said they're, they're natural to the mind. It's, it's what the mind is doing. And um, it's a function of the mind, in fact. And, you know, in a way, it's, it's, like, it's like he says, it's like the waves are the play of the ocean. And in the same way, thoughts are the, the play of the mind. I, I really love that word play because there's, a, there's such a lightness to it. However, when I think of my destructive thoughts, um, it just doesn't feel like play, not to me. And so, and so, yeah, you know, um, I, I, I find that, you know, those thoughts and, you know, they're often filled with these emotions that lead to fear or panic or depression. And that's when things get trickier. And that's when I get, I get hooked, you know, by those thoughts, they, they come along and they, they pull you into that river that Minga Rinpoche often talks about. They're, you're suddenly, suddenly in the river. And, um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's something you think, you know, you've done wrong or somebody doesn't like us or you think so-and-so shouldn't have done this. Or, you know, there's so many things that our, our mind comes up with. We might feel regret or we're worried about something or someone. So, so yeah. Um, can you guys relate to falling into the river? I, uh, I, I think we, we can all relate. We can all relate to that. So, so you know, I find when once in the river that it's, um, it's just very difficult to see the river bank. And it's almost like I'm, I'm one with whatever thought or whatever emotion is, is at play. So I think what we're doing here is um, we're actually becoming lifeguards. I have this image of standing on the riverbank where lifeguards and we keep fishing ourselves out of the river. And Mingyur Rinpoche is teaching us to be um, pretty good life, better lifeguards. Um, so, and he, he gave us some wonderful steps to work with on Sunday. So let's, let's work with that. Um, Let's start. So I invite you to um, get comfortable, to find a comfortable seat, whether you're on the floor, or whether you're in a chair. Just making sure your, you know, your spine is upright. And there's just generally a sense of relaxation and, and being at ease. And you know you can meditate with your eyes open or closed. It's, um, it's whichever you prefer. And so for just these first few moments, let's just allow, by taking some deep breath, 
allowing any tension to release from the body and mind. So just letting go by breathing out the tension. You know, we can just check in with our body and see how does it feel right now? Where, where are you holding the tightness, the tension? Yeah, I think for me, it's in my shoulders. So here, we're just bringing awareness to the sensations in the body. And those sensations are just helping us become present with what's happening right here and right now. So now that, that I've arrived, and I hope you have too, um, let's, let's connect with our motivation. Is there, is there a heartfelt, compassionate motivation that we can touch into? And can we imagine that this motivation is shared by many, many other people, that they too have this wish to be happy and to be at peace and to have a sense of well-being. So let's begin by counting the breath. On the in-breath and out-breath, let's just make that a cycle of one, and then inhale, exhale, two, and let's just make the object of our awareness the breath. If you lose track, just start at one again. And then we can just drop the counting and just simply know that we are breathing. So we're still focusing on the breath, but we're simply aware that we're breathing. We know we're breathing.
And as long as we know that we're breathing, we're meditating. It's that straightforward. So the breath is just a nice anchor for us as I invite you into this contemplation. So here, I'd like to invite you to invite a destructive thought, you know, one that's charged with emotion to maybe it's something that you, you know, maybe it's something about yourself or someone else or a particular situation. And choose a thought that your wise, your very wise self knows is workable right now at this moment. And let's remember Rinpoche's um, words that we can, we can hold these thoughts lightly. And he used the word opinion. We can hold them as an opinion. We don't have to necessarily believe that thought. Rinpoche also gave us another great image to work with. It was uh, a table with four legs. And he said, you know, just like a table is held up by four legs, a destructive thought is also being held up um, by different parts and pieces. And that makes that thought so much more solid and real. One such component is the sensation in the body. So as we, you know, contemplate this destructive thought, this emotion, can we notice a particular sensation in the body? Is there a a tightness? Is there a constriction? Is there any pain? Here we're just noticing whatever sensation is linked to that emotion. So we're just watching that sensation. And then as you watch can you notice uh, a subtle attitude towards, towards that thought? Maybe it's like, oh no, not this one, not this one again. Or, ah, oh, I hate that thought. Can we notice that aversion? Or maybe strangely there's a feeling of attachment, you know, a slight grasping to the familiarity of that 
particular thought. So let's just get acquainted with the aversion. Let's look with a a curiosity, a gentle inquiry. As Rinpoche said, just allowing that aversion, that's the tenderness, that's the kindness, that's the forgiveness. And then you might notice that some kind of a visual or image appears with this um, particular emotion. And that image, much like the sensation, is also a piece of that destructive emotion, destructive thought. It's one of the legs of the table. So what image arises for you with this thought. And remember, you always have the breath you can rely on to go back to as your anchor. And Sometimes Rinpoche talks about having an inner TV and so I I can just play this image on my inner TV as as a viewer. And you, you might notice that that image shifts It changes, it moves, it's all okay. And then another component is that there's often this auditory track, there's a voice, there's And that voice is often communicating some kind of a belief, like, oh, I can't believe I did that, or something awful is going to happen, you know, or can we notice this auditory track, this commentary? Can we hold this track as an opinion that we can take and leave? Or can we hear it just as mere sound? You know, sound that isn't necessarily pleasant. But here we're just staying with it as sound, without judgment, without pushing it away. Without controlling it.
And that's the kindness. So now let's spend a moment and just watch this this drama in front of us, the sensations, the image, the voice, our beliefs. All of these are playing together. They occupy a big stage sometimes. But the more we can hold them with this tenderness, the more the glue begins to loosen. like when we can spend time with all of these component components that's the the wisdom part just being with emotions as they are that's the wisdom and then slowly the the table begins to lose its legs <laughs> and we're on the river bank we're not in the river So now let's let go of any contemplation, any thought, and just allow the mind to rest naturally in open awareness. Just present and aware. So we're just resting the mind. We're not meditating. We're not distracted. We're simply being who we are, and there's no need to be any different.
And in these last moments, just feeling our hearts and feeling appreciation for ourselves. And also for the others who join us. Extending appreciation to, to this circle and then beyond. And then dedicating the practice, you know, finding your way to dedicate whatever benefit that we might have gained by meditating today and, and somehow also including benefit for, for others, for all beings. So... Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining this practice session today. It was uh, really, no really nice being here and uh, having this opportunity. Mingi Rinpoche, he'll be teaching this Sunday again on this channel. And uh, Edwin Kelly, Turgar instructor, will be joining us, will be joining as well, um, teaching on Thursday. And we have the Turgor facilitators. They, um, they're doing these practice sessions Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And uh, George will be back next week. And um, yeah, I also want to say if, if um, some of you are new to Turgor and are enjoying these meditations, then you might want to check out learning.turgor.org. Um, Mingi Rinpoche has a wonderful program called the joy of living and if if these meditations resonate with you then that might be a, a program you might enjoy so have a wonderful wonderful rest of the week and i wish you wish you all well and uh, thanks for thanks for joining today <laughs>